Welcome back to episode 4 of the free to play level 3 skiller series. We're starting off this video with a total level of 248 as well as 9 quests completed with 20 quest points. The goal of this video is to reach 300 total level and that's because if I want to join the clan that I'm in on my level 3 skiller, District 3, as a free to play skiller you need to have a minimum of at least 300 total level to have the lowest rank in the clan chat. I don't want to tell anybody that this account exists yet, so it's going to be kind of fun to join as like an undercover sort of deal. So yeah, the goal of this video is to reach a total level of 300 and join District 3. I know it's not exactly ideal, but I do want to train some fishing right now, get our fishing level up a little bit. I would normally be doing fly fishing at this point in time, however, I really like being able to get passive woodcutting experience as well, because even though the fishing XP is a lot less here per hour, I'm able to take advantage of all the forestry events happening as well, which give me pretty good woodcutting XP, as you guys can see so far. I think we only cut a total of like two trees, and we were able to get 31 woodcutting, all because of the forestry events. So I'm definitely going to hang out and keep fishing here, at least until 30 fishing, because at level 30 is when you could actually catch salmon while fly fishing. So it's not really too worth doing fly fishing until you can at least catch salmon. So until then, we're just going to be hanging out here. Just at level 26 cooking, which is only important because we're now at 250 total level. Another milestone level here, level 35 wood cutting. Alright, here we are at level 30 fishing. We can now catch salmon over in Barbarian Village. However, we are going to stay here just for a little longer. I would like to get level 35 cooking first so that we can make wines, which we have in the bank ready to go. I also want to stick around here until we get to level 41 woodcutting. That way we're able to use the rune axe whenever we do want to properly train woodcutting. We're actually almost already level 40 woodcutting and on the next forestry event we will be 40 woodcutting. And then we'll only have one level to go. So we're definitely going to be sticking around until 41 woodcutting and 35 cooking. I also stopped going to the bank because every time I go to the bank it resets the aggro on the dark wizards. So what I do now is I just wait until somebody makes a fire and then I just cook my food here and drop it. Which has been really nice because it's way more AFK not having to worry about getting randomly attacked and killed by a wizard. And speaking of forestry events, we just got the tree roots event. I didn't realize that the flower forestry event was a members only event. And it is kind of nice actually training in free to play woodcutting because you only get the struggling sapling and the roots. And the roots I think are the best event. Struggling sapling is pretty good too because of the XP drop at the end. And especially in Drainer Village, there aren't any weird obstacles to have to run around during these events. But here we go, level 40 woodcutting. We only need 3.8k XP until the next level. But yeah, I don't really like the flower event, so it's kind of nice not having it in free to play worlds. Okay, so that root event almost got us halfway to level 41 woodcutting already. It's absolutely crazy how fast you get woodcutting levels here. Alright, here we go. Level 41 woodcutting. We can now use the rune axe and the gilded axe. Never gonna buy the gilded axe though. I think they're like super expensive. Uh, I'm not sure though. Let me see. Yeah, they're 5.6 mil. Not really worth the fashion scape, especially as a level 3 when you would only see it when I'm actually woodcutting because I'm not able to wield it because I don't have 40 attack. We're also almost at level 35 cooking, so uh, yeah, we're almost done here in Drainer Village. Then we can start making some wines and getting some real good XP. And here we are. Level 35 cooking, we can now make wines, which is going to be the method that we use until we get to level 99. Uh, I don't really know if I'm going to get level 99 on this account, but if we do, that's what I'm going to be doing. But now that we're done in Drainer Village, we won't be coming back here for quite a while until we come back to properly train woodcutting and actually get some woodcutting levels. But yeah, we have 13,000 jugs of wine that we're ready to make. So we're just going to be here making wines until we get to at least 300 total level. So the deal with making wines is that at level 35, though you can make wine, you only have a 60% chance of success and a 40% chance of making bad wine. Bad wine is essentially like burning food whenever you're training cooking. It's just a waste of material and you don't get any XP for it. And something neat about wine is whenever you're making them, you don't get an XP drop each wine you make, but you get it when all of the wine that you make ferments. So you're able to basically balance this in your bank, and if you're quick enough, you won't get an XP drop until all at once, once you stop making wines. Which is how in one of my earlier Skiller series videos, I was able to get a 1 million XP drop, and that was for making wines. 
So the thing is, as I said, at level 35 cooking, you only have a 60% chance of making good wine, and you stop making bad wine altogether at level 68. So unlike my video where I got a 1 million XP drop by stacking a bunch of wines in the bank, at level 35 cooking, that would be a terrible idea, because if I stack, let's say, 1,000 wines, and then they all fermented, they're all fermenting at level 35 cooking. So out of those 1,000 wines, 600 of them would be good and 400 of them would be bad and a waste of time and XP and cash. So the smart thing to do with these lower levels of cooking is to do smaller stacks. That way you get more XP drops and it will raise your cooking level, which in turn raises your level of success. And the success rate of your levels is actually pretty important because at level 35, it's 60% chance of success, but at level 50, it's 78.5% chance of success. So yeah, it's a pretty big difference and now I'm gonna get attacked because that guy lured a dark wizard in here. So what I'm doing right now is I'm stacking up 500 wines to do the first big XP drop at level 35 cooking. And here finishes up our last inventory of wine before our first big XP drop. We have 504 unfermented wines in the bank. And so what I do now is I just stop making wines and I just give it some time and then we will get the XP drop here and boom, 80,200 XP. Got us directly to level 50 cooking. That's kind of funny because that's the hypothetical that I referenced. All right, here we go. We have another 504 unfermented wines in the bank. Last time we got an 80,000 XP drop. 80,400 again. Um, our cooking level is now 55, which is nice. So we went up five more levels. Uh, I think we still did a few bad ones. Yeah, that should have been a little bit different XP wise. And the success rate at level 55 cooking is 84%, which is a lot better than the 60% at level 35 cooking. So it's actually been two days since that last clip. Been on my main skiller doing Guardians of the Rift. However, that account is not important right now. What is important is we only need three more levels until we are able to join District 3 on this account. Alright, we have 210 unfermented wine in the bank. Not sure if that's going to be enough to get us to 58. Hopefully it is, but I guess we'll see here in a second. And no, but it was very, very close. Got us up to 57, but with only 756 XP left. That's literally less than one inventory of wine, so we'll just do this one real quick. And in the meantime, I will join District 3 as a guest. Alright, there we go, and there we go, level 58 cooking. We now have 300 total level. It's only 515,000 XP. Now we have to hit up the clan and see if I can get recruited. Look at me being sneaky on my other account, trying to put another message in to get recruited because nobody really responded besides Astra's not. Well, it looks like it was a bust. This whole time was for nothing. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, no one's online besides Slough, and he's at the Redwood Trees right now. So I have to wait till someone else gets on in order to recruit me in. In the meantime, though, I think we can crack out a couple of quests, maybe Prince Alley Rescue and Pirate's Treasure. Um, I think those are really the only two I have left, except for Black Knight's Fortress. Actually, you know what? I think we're gonna do Below Ice Mountain, because I do want to be able to get the Imkando Hammer, because that'll help a lot when training smithing. I just gotta grab a couple stuff from the Grand Exchange. I need one cooked meat, one piece of bread, one knife, and three GP, which I obviously already have. But nevertheless, we don't have cooked meat, bread, or a knife. Alright, so we have everything for Below Ice Mountain. While I'm here, I might as well get the stuff for Black Knight's Fortress, Pirate's Treasure, and Prince Alley Rescue. Might as well just have it sitting in the bank. Alright, so now we have everything in the quest tab for Blow Ice Mountain, Pirate's Treasure, Prince Alley Rescue, and Shield of Arav. And apparently I could do Mistelin Mystery as well. Um, I don't think I've ever done that quest. However, it appears that I am able to do it, so that's going to be added to the list as well. But anyway, without further ado, let's get into Below Ice Mountain now that we have the 16 quest points that we originally needed. So I've done this quest once before, and I read all of the dialogue, I didn't just spacebar through it. And I really do recommend, if you haven't done this quest before, to try it out and actually read the dialogue. It's actually a really good quest, so it's definitely worth doing if you haven't done it already. Let's not forget, 
I do keep that big iron on me. And these bythons, they don't play nice. And there we go. We have now unlocked the flex emote. Apparently something's happening in the party room. Maybe I should go check it out. Probably won't make it in time. It looks like we're already missing it. Oh man. Just run in and start popping. I mean, I got three GP. So, I mean, there is that. But I'm pretty sure we missed the entire drop party here. Yeah, there's absolutely nothing in here. Apparently this guy got a gilded plate body. Yeah, and I do believe him because the bankers were yelling about it. So, um, looks like we just missed it. That's so annoying. Actually, I don't even know if I can get anything because I wanted to put 3 GP in and my account is still restricted for another 20 minutes. So I don't know if I would have actually been able to pick it up if I were to get anything. Probably not because that would be like the most obvious way of breaking trade restrictions. So yeah, we didn't get anything, but that's completely all right because even if we did, I'm pretty sure we wouldn't be able to pick it up. While we're already here next to the Falador Castle, might as well start the Black Knight's Fortress so that I don't have to run back here. All right, Black Knight's Fortress has been started. But first, let's get back to Below Ice Mountain. Alright, so this is the tricky part. Um, I've died here a couple times on my main skiller. Uh, hopefully I don't actually die here. Hope I brought enough food. Alright. So that was a lot easier than I remembered. I think the first time I did this, I didn't really know that it was coming up, that I had to do it. But, um, yeah. There we go. Below Ice Mountain has been completed. We get one quest point, 2,000 coins, and access to the ruins of Camdozel. Now that the quest has been completed, we now have access to all of this stuff. Now we can actually go and try to get the Mkando hammer. It didn't take me too long on my main, but I have watched other YouTubers and some people it took tons of hours. So hopefully we don't go too dry on it and we get it pretty quickly. So this is basically just Motherload Mine, but in free-to-play, where you just mine the ores that are on the walls, and then you take all of your shards and your deposits to the bank. Hey, we just got the first random event outfit. Now that I'm thinking about it, we don't even have any emotes either from random events. However, we at least have the frog token now, which means that we can get the frog helmet or the prince's outfit. I'm just happy that I remembered that this was going to be our first outfit piece on this account, and I remember to record it. That is all. All right, the first inventory of Baronite deposits have been mined. We have 469 Baronite shards, and just this one inventory got us up to level 24 mining. So all you gotta do is just click on the Baronite Crusher Anvil with a hammer in your inventory and Baronite deposits, and your character is going to get to work breaking up these Baronite deposits and giving you 30 smithing XP each. And there we go, level 30 smithing. We can now smelt steel and make steel daggers. Not bad, not bad at all. But the whole point of breaking these deposits up is because they can contain items, such as the one that we already got, the Baronite Head. I believe that is used to make the Baronite Mace, which I think is a pretty decent free-to-play weapon. And once you're done, you could right-click Romarno, and you could use your shards to do upgrades while in these ruins. So if you're going for the Imkando Hammer, the best options that you want to upgrade is Mining and Luck. Mining gives you a 10% buff of getting Baronite faster, and luck gives you a 5% buff to your chance to find rare items, which are things like the Baronite Head and the Imkando Hammer. So once we have 2,500 shards, we're gonna exchange that for the mining buff. 25 mining sneaking in here. All right, the second inventory has been completed. We're about to get 1,000 Baronite shards. Not too bad, not too bad at all. Hopefully we get the hammer soon, it is a 1 in 300 drop. We already got the Baronite Head, which is a 1 in 200 drop, which I'm surprised we got in our first inventory. But yeah, I'll put on the screen right now all of the loot that we can get here, including their drop rates. And we just got the Ancient Treatise. Treatise? I don't know that word. That is a 1 in 350 drop. But basically all you could do with this is turn it into the Curator in the Varrock Museum and you get one kudos. So uh, it's not really worth having, but now that we have it, I, I guess that's fine. I just realized there's also a collection log here for Cam Dozel. So yeah, it is kind of cool that we did get this um, and the Baronite head because uh, yeah, let's see how much stuff we could fill out before we get the Cam Do Wait a minute, what? It's a member's item? <laughs> oh no, no. <laughs> I seriously did not know that. That's the only reward that's a member's item. 
That is so annoying. What? Well, that's actually really annoying. We've just been wasting our time here. And we basically did the quest for no reason other than completing it. Uh, yeah, that's not too cool. I don't know what I was thinking. I just assumed, which I should learn not to do at this point. But yeah, that's really, really sucky. Good thing I looked it up, though, because if I didn't, I would have been here for a very, 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 very long time because I never would have got it as a drop. So today is a new day and picking up where we left off yesterday, I'm going to go do another quest. And the quest that we're going to be doing is Black Knight's Fortress because we are literally just around the corner from being able to do the next step. So yeah, I figured since that quest was basically useless for my account, might as well do another one. I mean, we eventually want to get all of the free to play quests that I can do done just for like completionist sake. Also, it appears that there are no ranks online in District 3 that can recruit me besides Slough again. Hopefully, he's not AFK at the Redwood Trees this time. And alright, there we go. Black Knight's Fortress has been completed. Since that quest was so easy and we got it done in literally like 5 minutes or less, might as well do another quest real quick. Um, I think we're actually going to do Prince Alley Rescue. Unless we're closer to something else. Maybe we're closer to Pirate's Treasure. Um... Yeah, we're gonna go do Pirate's Treasure. And Pirate's Treasure has been started. And Pirate's Treasure... Can I not kill this guy? I have to kill him? Wait, what? Or can I just run away? Okay, cool. Can I dig? Can I dig? Can I dig? Can this guy leave? Uh, okay. Oh, there we go. Weird. Alrighty, there we go. We got two quest points and one-eyed Hector's treasure. Let's see what is in the casket. And it is a massive 450 gold coins, a gold ring, and an emerald. So now all of the quests that we have to complete are just Mistal and Mystery, Prince Alley Rescue, and Shield of Arav, and then we're all done with the free-to-play quests. I mean, I guess because we're here in Falador, we can do some air rune crafting. I'm really not in the mood to do that, but I mean, it kind of makes sense to do it now, especially because this is the bank that I'm going to be using for my runs. So uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in a second. And here comes the very first rune crafting level on the account from actually training. Level five rune crafting, and we can already craft water runes. We're just going to stick with crafting air runes for now, though, until we're a little bit of a higher level. You see, normally on an account, I would be doing fire runes at level 14. However, I don't know if fire runes are the way to go in free to play because you'd have to bank in the duel arena, which is no longer the duel arena. I don't even know what it looks like anymore, but I'm not really sure what the most efficient route of training is going to be on this account for rune crafting, especially because I'm free to play and dueling rings don't exist. So I can't just teleport to castle wars bank and then teleport to the duel arena and just run over. I actually have to legitimately figure it out and run and drink a ton of energy potions and all of that. So I am going to have to look up some free to play guides on rune crafting, which is a really weird thing I never thought I would say. But here comes level 10 rune crafting. If I was a member, I can now craft dust runes. However, I'm just kind of excited because the stat looks so much cleaner now. I know that level 10 isn't very high whatsoever, but you have to admit it does look a lot nicer than level four rune crafting. But that's actually where I'm going to end today's video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. I know that the end goal was to get into District 3, but uh, yeah, I basically got in. Come on, guys. I only needed 300 total level. I'm at 312. There just isn't anyone online right now that could actually recruit me into the clan. Then again, I'm always asking to get recruited between like 1 in the morning and 6 in the morning. So yeah, that kind of makes sense why they're not on. But as soon as someone is online, I will be able to join. No worries at all. So yeah, I'm going to count it. But anyway, if you did like the video, be sure to drop a like below to let me know that you are enjoying the content. And if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing. That way you see when a new free to play skiller video comes out. But with all that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.